Hello everyone. Welcome to this video where I present you an interesting pattern to scale attended automations using Power Automate for desktop along with Windows Task Scheduler. My name is Jay Parmiti and I'm excited to share this scenario to help increase your process efficiency by leveraging a new run mode introduced in Power Automate for desktop called Picture in Picture along with Windows Task Scheduler to streamline and scale your attended automations. So let's get started. The problem statement for this um, tutorial is um, you own an attended automation that operates for several minutes because it goes through multiple steps, yet you would like to initiate multiple instances of that particular automation without having to wait for the current run to complete. Now, think about how we can achieve this. Okay, so one ideal solution that you can achieve this um, scenario is through a Cloudflow. Um, calling out the desktop flow in the attended mode. And that attended mode for the desktop flow um, will leverage a new runtime mode that was introduced called picture in picture. Let's see a quick demo of how this will play out. You have a source application that will call out the cloud flow, right? You can leverage uh, the HTTP as the trigger or any of the other triggers. For this demonstration, I'm using a simple HTTP endpoint of the Cloudflow uh, to be invoked by this source application. And that Cloudflow will um, invoke the desktop flow um, through the attended mode and also use the runtime mode as the picture-in-picture. -picture. That picture-in-picture -picture session will initiate on the machine that is running the attended automation as a child session. And you can trigger this cloud flow multiple times, and it will initiate this um, desktop flow in sequence, meaning that any future desktop flow runs will be cured by the Power Automate Orchestrator. So let's see a quick demo on how it actually plays out. OK, so to demonstrate this scenario, I have created a simple web application. Um, all this web application does is take a URL um, and then call out this web API endpoint, uh, which is nothing but the HTTP trigger endpoint for the Cloudflow. Let's take a quick look at how that looks at. So here's the HTTP trigger. Um, I have the HTTP URL. So what it does is it waits for the uh, HTTP request to come in um, and hit that URL, and then it will run this Cloudflow. As it runs, it will run this desktop flow as well. Okay, so let's take a quick look on how this will run, right? So it is the first instance of my run. And I'm going to initiate multiple times to illustrate the point of um, sequencing, right? Sequencing our desktop flow runs in attended mode without losing any of those actions. All right, so that is that. And let's take a look to see how our cloud flows are behaving. OK, so you have three cloud flows running. And when we come back here and then look at our desktop flows, so you can see that they are in. One is in the running mode. That means that everything is sequenced. And the rest of the two are um, queued as well. And here's the picture-in-picture -picture mode uh, session that is um, running right now. Uh, we'll see that uh, the desktop flow uh, is running um, as expected. OK, there you go. That's the second instance of it. That's the run that is successful. So this concludes the demonstration of how you can actually scale your attended automations using Power Automate and Power Automate for desktop, native capabilities, and newly introduced run mode picture in picture. OK, now that we have seen the native capability and the ideal way of doing this, let's add an additional constraint. That is, um, keeping the entire workload of calling out the desktop flow attended automation local, meaning that the source application is going to stay on the same machine and it's not going to communicate out to, um, to the internet. Um, so you are limited to calling your Cloudflow through uh, HTTP calls. So how do you proceed in this situation, right? In this interesting scenario, um, you can achieve it through a combination of the Windows tools. Um, you'll start off with creating a custom event log and associate a Windows task associated to that custom event log, and then a couple of PowerShell scripts that will monitor the jobs that are created. And one of the partial script will invoke the Power Automate for desktop in the similar run mode of PIP. All right, let's see how this one ends up. Okay, 
Um, here is the solution design uh, for this unique scenario of running attended automations using pad in PIP run mode, but with the combination of uh, Windows custom event log, task scheduler, and few uh, PowerShell scripts. Similar to the previous scenario, uh, the source application in this case is going to trigger um, the attended automation, but this time it will write an event to a Windows log. That creation of the entry um, here at the Windows custom log um, will create a uh, will create a task instance that that is associated to that custom event log. And what it does is on creation of that event, you will have a PowerShell script um, that will create a job file with the timestamp. And then as you create um, these events, um, they will uh, end up being multiple job files. So now how does the, the desktop flow gets triggered? You have one more um, scheduled task that actually looks at these job files that get created, um, wakes up and checks for that job file. And if it exists, it invokes the desktop flow using the run URL pad. Right? Um, so you can set out that desktop flow run mode to be picture in picture by default, that will enable this whole scenario nicely. Now let's take a quick live demo of how this will look like. OK, here's a quick demo of um, using the source application to write to event log and then use the Windows task scheduler to run the attended automations in sequence. Here's the web application, uh, sample web application that I've created to demonstrate this scenario. Um, once I click on this link, what it simulates is it simulates a event to be written to the custom event log, and that will trigger the rest of the process. Let's see how it um, runs. Once I click on it, and it will tell me that something has been logged successfully. And then let's take a quick look at our custom event log. You see 3.23. This is the event that gets written. Um, I clicked on Microsoft documentation, and everything else gets logged. How does this happen? Once it does it, it creates a job file um, that's available as part of this. Here is the job file. And then I have a another um, task that will run and take out the job file. And what that does is it initiates the, the desktop flow in picture in picture mode. As you can see, the desktop flow is running and it completed successfully. Let's see how it runs in parallel. When I say hello, multiple instances, but the desktop flows are sequenced. Okay, so that's even number one, even number two, even number three. All right, so let's see how those events arrive. So you have all those events coming through, and let's see how the tasks are getting coming here. So you have three tasks that are already created, and now let's take a look to see how our desktop flows are. Okay, so that's desktop flow number one. Um, Running. Okay, so that completed. And you will see the second instance of the desktop flow triggered very shortly. The job file here, so that's this. There are only two jobs now. And the second job is going to be triggered. There you go. We have the pad dispatcher to wake up every minute to trigger this desktop flow. That's the run instance for the second job. Uh, that was um, sent to this attended automation. So desktop flow runs in sequence, and you see that the job flow, there's only one additional invocation that came through. So that's going to run in the next run of that dispatcher job. So this concludes the demonstration of running attended automations locally to the machine uh, without the use of the desktop flows and combination of cloud flows. So this is a, a very interesting scenario. Um, now that we have seen the demo, let's go behind the scenes and how we have achieved it. For the custom scenario of using the event log and the task scheduler, first you need to create a custom event log. Um, you can use the get event log um, to list out the current set of event logs that are available within the system. And then you can use the new event log to create the custom event log for your specific scenario. Next is the creation of the Windows task. There are two tasks. And the first task is the queue task, where we, based on the arrival of an event on the custom event log, we create this task to, uh, we invoke this task to create the job file. Um, 
here's the name that you can provide, and then the description of queuing the incoming request, and certain other parameters as you wish. And I have set it out to be hidden so that it doesn't show up on the screen when it runs. And then the second part is the triggers. Um, trigger, I've set out the custom log to be the name that I have provided, and the task will begin on the arrival of an event. And then the third part is the action. And this is where the action is set out to start a PowerShell script. And then I have set in certain uh, arguments to ensure that it actually runs. The second is the pad dispatcher task. Here, this task will follow the same suite, except that the trigger is set out to run on a more recurrence manner. Um, here, I enable it to run every minute. Um, so that way it will wake up and find the job file that was created by the previous task and execute as part of the action another PowerShell script that will launch the Power Admit for desktop. All right, here's the PowerShell script for both the PowerShell scripts that we have uh, discussed. The queue task script is uh, defined here. It's a very straightforward one. Uh, whenever um, this script is executed, it will go to the queue path um, and then create a new job file. And the second one is the pad dispatcher. This one will create a log file. If the, if the task is not running already, if it does, um, it takes out the, um, the job file and execute the, the process. All right, now coming to the desktop flow uh, settings and capturing the run URL, um, you wanna ensure uh, that the attended automations uh, desktop flow, uh, the default uh, run mode is set out to be as the local attended run. Um, and then you set it out as the uh, picture in picture run mode as the default. And then in order to capture the, the run URL, you can definitely go to the details section of that desktop flow and capture the run URL. Okay, now we have come to the conclusion of this um, tutorial. Um, in this video, we have seen uh, two different mechanisms of scaling your attender automations. One is the ideal and the recommended way, which is to leverage the cloud flow with desktop flow. And given the constraint of keeping everything local and not having the ability to invoke HTTP calls, um, you can use the Windows Task Scheduler um, to enhance your uh, automation runs um, and then scale them. Both native and custom solution obviously provides a, a powerful way to scale your attended automations with the newly introduced picture-in-picture -picture mode for desktop flows. Right? This aspect of it improves your overall workflow management and can reduce your um, repetitive tasks and enhance your overall workflow management. With that, I would like to thank you for your time. Happy automating.